Hello students, welcome to e-partshala. Let us have a general idea on the structure and functions of gastrointestinal tract in this module. Human beings build their body and obtain energy from other living organisms such as plants and animals by ingesting them. The ingested food materials are passed through the digestive system which forms a tubular cavity in the body. It is opened at both the ends and referred to as the alimentary canal or gastrointestinal tract. The digestive and accessory organs of gastrointestinal system helps in the process of digestion by secreting the enzymes and digestive juices for hydrolysis. The digested food materials are absorbed and transported to different parts of the body by the respective organs. The food materials transported gets metabolized and used for various cellular activities. With this background, it is essential to understand the anatomy and digestive system before knowing its mechanism. Objectives of this module This module enables the learner to understand the structure of an alimentary canal and its associated organs and to describe the functions of different parts of alimentary canal in digestion process. Coming to the organization of the digestive system, the human digestive system consists of the gastrointestinal tract and the accessory organs of digestion of complex food materials into simpler components which can be absorbed and assimilated into the body. Mouth The gastrointestinal tract starts at the mouth which is also known as oral or buccal cavity and comprises several structures which aid in digestion. The mouth consists of vestibule and oral cavity proper. The area between teeth, lips and cheeks constitutes the vestibule whereas salivary gland and tongue forms the oral cavity proper. The oral cavity is lined with oral mucosa and mucous membrane that secretes lubricating mucus which is made up of glycoprotein mucin. The roof of the mouth is known as palate which separates oral cavity from the nasal cavity. The hard palate covers the roof of mouth and is formed by maxilla and palatine bones. It helps to facilitate the movement of food backwards towards the larynx. The soft palate, a muscular flap, occupies the back of the roof of mouth. It can be raised so as to shut off the nasal passage and prevent the airflow through nose. At the base of the soft palate is uvula, which prevents the food that is swallowed from passing into the nasal cavity. The lips are soft, fleshy folds of tissues that border the mouth and it is covered interiorly with mucous membrane and exteriorly by skin. It also encompasses the upper and outer lip. Lateral to lips are the fleshy structures, the cheeks that form the sides of the mouth. Tongue is a muscular organ that forms the floor of mouth and has many taste buds which produce the sense of taste by detecting chemicals present in food. The tongue has small ridges called papillae that help it to grip and move around the mouth. The tongue also helps to produce speech by altering the airflow through mouth and produce sound of different consonants. Teeth is made up of dentine and covered by the hardest tissue enamel. Teeth chops and grind the food material into smaller pieces with the help of saliva and thereby increases the surface area for the action of digestive enzymes. During mastication, incisors are used for cutting the food pieces, canines for tearing, premolars and molars for chewing and grinding. Mastication of the food with saliva secreted by salivary gland in mouth moistens and lubricates the food particles to form a soft bolus before swallowing. The digestion is aided by the oral digestive saliva which is secreted by salivary glands namely parotid, submaxillary or submandibular and sublingual glands present in the mouth. These glands moisten and lubricate the food particles before swallowing. A watery or serous type of saliva containing enzymes but not mucus is secreted by parotid glands. 
both mucus producing elements and enzymes are secreted by submandibular gland which is present below the jaw the sublingual gland located underneath the tongue produces only the mucus type of saliva thus the main function of mouth is ingestion of food materials chewing and mixing of food with saliva and transfer of food to esophagus by swallowing followed by mouth is the pharynx which is also known as throat is a muscular tube like organ which extends to the esophagus the swallowed food that is the bolus enters the stomach from mouth through oropharynx by passing through constricted opening called fauces pharynx serves as a common path for both respiration and digestive tract since air and food must pass through it before entering the digestive tube esophagus is a long muscular collapsible mucus lined tube which extends from pharynx to stomach it serves as a dynamic passage way for food and pushes the food towards stomach by peristaltic waves the esophagus is guarded by muscular spinster at each end the upper esophageal spinster prevents air entering during respiration the lower esophageal spinster or cardiac spinster is located near an opening in the diaphragm known as esophageal hiatus the esophageal hiatus permits the passage of esophagus into the abdomen the junction between esophagus and stomach is controlled by lower esophageal spinster which stays constricted during swallowing and vomiting to prevent backflow of food materials from stomach to esophagus diaphragm the thoracic cavity is separated from abdominal cavity by the muscular diaphragm the duodenum is attached to the diaphragm by suspensory muscles which pay way for the easier passage of digestive materials through duodeno jejunal flexure stomach the stomach is an elongated pouch or sac like organ located between the esophagus and small intestine the curve formed by the upper right and lower left surface of the stomach is known as lesser or greater curvature respectively the stomach has three regions namely fundus body and pylorus the fundus is the largest region of the stomach and is elevated above the level of esophageal opening the body is the central part and pylorus is the lower portion of the stomach the pylorus has two regions namely the proximal antrum and distal pyloric canal which ends in pyloric spinster and opens into the duodenum the junction between the body and the antrum is called incisura angularis the wall of the stomach has four layers of tissue a mucus lining submucous layer mucal layer and a fibrocerus layer the innermost layer of gastrointestinal wall is a mucosa which is made up of a linear mucus epithelium a large loose connective tissue laminar propria and a thin layer of smooth muscles muscularis mucosa the submucosal layer is composed of connective tissues blood vessels lymph vessels alveolar tissues and meissner's nerve plexus it is thicker than mucosal layer and the muscular layer is thick that wraps submucosa and contains myentric plexus which lies between the inner circular and outer longitudinal smooth muscles lining the muscularis it regulates the movement of digestive tract and secretion the outermost layer serosa is made up of connective tissues and peritoneum it covers the stomach where omenta are attached the epithelial lining of the stomach is thrown into folds called ragage which are marked by depressions known as gastric pits below the level of gastric pits particularly in the fundus and the body of stomach numerous coiled tubular glands called gastric glands are present these glands secrete gastric juice which contains hydrochloric acid and digestive enzymes the hydrochloric acid dissolves the particulate matter in food and particularly gets digested in the stomach by pepsin hydrochloric acid also kills the bacteria 
that enters along with the food and few survive to colonize and multiply in gastrointestinal tract mainly the large intestine the entire surface of the stomach gastric pits and gastric glands are covered by secretory cells namely chief cells which secretes enzymes of the gastric juice parietal cells which secrete hydrochloric acid and intrinsic factors which binds to vitamin b12 to protect them from digestive juices and gets absorbed when they reach small intestine and endocrine cells which se secretes ghrelin a hormone that stimulates the hypothalamus to increase appetite and gastrin which influences the digestive function the gastric glands in antrum contains enteroendocrine cells which secrete gastrin and enterochromaffin like cells which release histamine and d cells secrete somatostatin the stomach functions to store dissolve and partially digest the macromolecules into food and regulate the rate of which the contents of the stomach empty into the small intestine the small intestine is a long coiled loop found in the abdominal cavity it consists of short duodenum which is about 20 to 25 cm long surrounds the head of the pancreas and the uppermost region followed by duodenum is the jejunum which is 2.5 m long and the longest segment ileum which is 3 m long the mucosal layer of small intestine has many folds and tiny projections called villi which have velvety appearance each villus consists of an arteriole venule and lacteal or lymph cells and resembles a fine brush this brush border is formed of microvilli which increases the surface area of the small intestine and helps in digestion and absorption in villi and crypts mucus secreting globet cells are found where the intestinal crypts serve as a site of rapid mitotic cell division at the base of each crypt secretory cells produce enzymes that inhibit bacterial growth in small intestine the small intestine which is named as workhouse of digestion since nutrient absorption is higher in this region the chyme mixes with the digestive secretions received from the pancreas and liver by peristaltic movement the continuous breakdown of food material occurs in the duodenum whereas the jejunum and ileum are mainly responsible for the absorption of nutrients into the blood stream a worm like structure known as vermiform appendix is present at the posterior end of small intestine which has no functional activity the cecum is a pouch which marks division between small intestine and the large intestine the cecum receives chyme from the ileum of small intestine and connects to the ascending colon of the large intestine at this junction there is a sphincter or valve the ileocecal valve which slows the passage of chyme from the ileum allowing further digestion it is also the site of appendix attachment the large intestine bears the lowest part of the alimentary canal and noticeably larger than that of small intestine it is a 5 to 7 foot long muscular tube that connects the small intestine to the rectum the large intestine comprises the colon rectum and anus which bears the lower part of the alimentary canal and noticeably larger than the small intestine ileocolic spinster is present at the junction between ileum and cecum and no villi is present numerous mucus secreting globet cells are present and it is divided into cecum colon and rectum the colon is divided into ascending transverse descending and sigmoid portions the presence of intestinal mucus gland in the large intestine produces the lubricating mucus that coats the feces as they are formed uneven distribution of fibers in the muscle layer or longitudinal muscles are grouped into tape like strips called the tinea coli the circular muscles are formed into rings which produce pouch like hostra between them thus in the large intestine undigested materials gets concentrated the water and salts are absorbed and stored 
the descending colon is followed by the rectum and 8 inch chamber that connects the colon to the anus. The rectum also serves as the reservoir for feces. The contraction of rectum relaxes the associated spinster muscles to expel the fecus by defecation. The rectum opens into anus through anal canal. Anus is lined with pelvic floor muscles and the internal and external anal spinster. The pelvic floor muscles creates an angle between the rectum and the anus which stops the stool from coming out when it is not supposed to. The anal spinster provide fine control of stool and the internal spinster is always tight except when the stool enters the rectum. It keeps the continent when we are asleep or otherwise unaware of the presence of stool. When we get an urge to defecate, the external spinster keeps the stool unreleased. The liver, which is the largest gland and master gland and an accessory digestive gland in the body, is located in the upper right portion of the abdomen and just beneath the diaphragm. The liver is made of soft, pinkish brown tissue encapsulated by connective tissue the capsule the capsule is covered and reinforced by the peritoneum of abdominal cavity which protects the liver and holds it in the place within the abdomen the peritoneum connects the liver by coronary ligament right and left triangular ligament and the falciform ligament these connections are the condensed regions of peritoneal membrane that support the liver. The coronary, right and left triangular ligaments connect the liver to the diaphragm whereas the falciform ligament connects the liver to umbilicus. The liver consists of four lobes namely the left, right, caudate and quadrate lobes. The left and right lobes are the largest lobes which are separated by falciform ligament. The right lobe is five to six times larger than the left lobe. The caudate lobe extends from the posterior side of the right lobe and surrounds the inferior vena cava. The quadrate lobe also extends from the posterior side of the right lobe and wraps around the gallbladder. Each lobe is divided into numerous lobules by fibrous strands and small blood vessels which form a supporting framework for them. The lobules appear like a honeycomb and are made up of liver cells called hepatocytes. Each lobule has three vessels namely hepatic artery, portal vein and hepatic or bile duct. The branches of hepatic artery and portal vein open into sinusoids, a capillary like tube. This in turn opens into central vein which empties into hepatic vein. Sinusoids is a in the lobule or lined with reticuloendothelial cells. In between these cells, macrophages called Kupffer cells are present which kills the bacteria, worn out RBCs and other particles from the bloodstream. Bile secreted by the hepatic cells is collected by inute by canaliculi which then enters the bile duct. These bile ducts join together to form left and right hepatic ducts which carry bile from the left and right lobe of the liver. The common hepatic duct finally joins with the cystic duct from the gallbladder to form the common bile duct carrying bile to the duodenum of the small intestine. The blood supply of liver is unique among all organs of the body because of hepatic portal vein system. Blood traveling to the spleen, stomach, pancreas, gallbladder and intestine passes through the capillaries of these organs and collected into hepatic portal vein. It then delivers the blood to the tissues of liver where the contents of the blood are divided into smaller vessels and processed before being passed on to the other parts of the body. The exit of blood from the hepatocytic tissues are collected into the hepatic vein which leads to vena cava and return back to the heart. The liver also has its own arteries and arterioles which provides oxygenated blood to its tissues. The liver being the most vital organ of the body perform many functions such as 
detoxification of various substances, metabolizes proteins, carbohydrates and fats, store iron, vitamin A, B12 and D and also produces important plasma proteins and also serves as a site of hematopoiesis during fetal development. The gallbladder which is a pear shaped organ lies beneath the liver. The wall of the gallbladder is composed of serous, muscular and mus mucus layer. It consists of three sections namely fundus, body and neck. A duct called cystic duct arises from the gallbladder and opens into hepatic duct. These two ducts join together to form a common duct called common bile duct which opens into the duodenum along with pancreatic duct. At this junction is a mucosal fold called Hartmann's pouch where gallstones get stuck. The gallbladder functions as a storehouse of bile produced by the liver before being released into the small intestine. The hydrogen ions secreted from the inner lining of gallbladder keep the bile in acidic condition and prevent hardening. Water and electrolytes from the digestive system are added to the dilute the bile. In order to keep the bile in crystalline form, salts attach themselves to cholesterol molecules present in the bile. When bile is released into the intestine, it helps with the digestion of fats by breaking down these larger particles into smaller ones. After the absorption of fat, the bile also gets absorbed and transported back to liver for reuse. Pancreas The pancreas is an elongated and an accessory digestive gland located behind the stomach which exhibits both endocrine and exocrine functions. The exocrine part of pancreas is made up of axines or alveolar cells which possess the digestive enzymes. A small duct arises from the lumen of each alveolus and they unite to form intralobular duct which in turn joins to form the main duct of pancreas, the Wissung's duct. The Wissung's duct joins with common bile duct to form ampullae of water which opens into the duodenum. The pancreas plays an important role in digestion by secreting digestive enzyme found in the pancreatic juice. The beta cells of pancreas secrete insulin which control carbohydrate metabolism and alpha cells secrete glucagon. Thus, to ensure proper digestion and absorption of ingested food materials, the integration and coordination of the digestive organs and its activities are vital and necessary. The physical and chemical changes in the ingested food materials were brought in the oral cavity and the digested food materials were transported to different parts of the alimentary canal. The stomach which aids in digestion passes the digested food material to the small intestine where it gets absorbed and further metabolized. The process gets completed in large intestine where the undigested remnants are concentrated as feces and expelled out. Hence, the structure and gastrointestinal tract and its relationship are coupled with the functioning of other organisms, organs. The digestive efficiency of the organs in the digestion and absorption are very well related with the anatomy of the digestive system.